Welcome to the Shepherd's Pie, a slice of hope to raise faithful kids, where we focus on topics that impact young people today. I'm Antony Barone Kolenk. I'm a father of five who served in the Air Force for 21 years. I'm now a law professor and a columnist for Practical Homeschooling Magazine. I'm also the author of The Harwood Mysteries, an inspirational medieval fiction series for kids aged 10 and up. Here on The Shepherd's Pie, we want to inform, inspire, and help you to raise happy, healthy, faithful kids, whether you're a parent, a teacher, a grandparent, anyone. In today's episode, I speak with Hope Bollinger, the Managing and Acquisitions Editor at Endgame Press. She has multiple books out, including a middle grade book that focuses on the topics of kindness and empathy. And we'll be discussing why it's important to foster kindness and empathy in our kids, and how we can use fiction to grow those qualities in our youth. And in the entertainment segment, I ask Hope to review one of her favorite middle school books, The Legend of the Storm Sneezer. We hear a lot these days about bullying, about kids being mean to each other. We see kids putting on masks to cover up who they truly are because they're afraid of rejection. And we sometimes wonder, where is kindness and empathy in kids today? Especially in the world of social media and texting, where so much of the communication between our kids is done at arm's length. It's sometimes easy to forget that we're dealing with other people that can be hurt by things that we say. How do we encourage our kids to have more compassion for others and to fan into flame the virtue of kindness, to not be afraid to be kind to others? Well, our guest today, Hope Bollinger, has written a wonderful middle school book that explores that very concern, and why it's so important to encourage kids to be kind and understanding to each other, and how that ties into our faith and the Christian values that we find in the Gospels. I'm excited to have as my guest today, Hope Bollinger, the Managing and Acquisitions Editor at Endgame Press. She has got to be one of the most prolific authors I've seen. She has more than 1,300 works featured in various publications, all the way from Writer's Digest to Crosswalk.com. She has worked for various publishing companies and magazines, newspapers, you name it. She's edited such big names as Jerry B. Jenkins. She actually studied writing at Taylor University, became a literary agent before she graduated, where she helped play 70 books during that year. Uh, She's won all sorts of awards for her uh, essays and writing, and she also writes plays, does modeling, sings in the choir. Hope, uh, welcome to The Shepherd's Pie. Thanks so much for having me on here. We have a lot of things to talk about today. I know we want to talk about the topic of kindness and empathy and um, one of your many uh, books that are out there uh, that really focuses on that. But let's uh, first do a little bit of your background. Uh, How did you get so prolific in such a short period of time? Not by choice. So I, I, you know, the Lord has opened a lot of doors in recent years. What I thought it was going to be was maybe if I was lucky, I was going to get a book contract for every single year. And then as the Lord would have it, I, um, in recent years, just have gotten quite a few. And so some years I had as many as six books that were due that year. So I just kind of learned to write first drafts very quickly. I often teach a class at conferences on how to write a book in the span of a month. So um, it's definitely a lot of balancing of schedules. I definitely have to be very good about time management, but everything seems to be able to be turned in with just the right amount of time. And where did you learn to write uh, so well that you can, you know, pull off writing a book in a month and getting an actual contract from a traditional publisher? This is a great question, because honestly, I've heard it said that it takes a million words to develop an author's voice. So I had started writing back in high school. I wrote during math class instead of paying attention to math class, and it probably explains my grades in math class. 
But what actually really helped me hone the craft was when I did study at Taylor University that you had mentioned earlier. Um, I was able to talk with industry professionals, really learn what it took to be in the industry through a lot of unpaid internships I did in the program. I was able to work with publishing houses and kind of understand, okay, this is exactly what they're looking for. And I would gear my writing toward that. And it's kind of basically a practice makes perfect sort of thing. I often equate the writing process to running a marathon. The more you run, the easier it gets and the more you're able to do it. Wonderful. And what types of books do you like to write? You, uh, you have a lot of them coming out. Uh, is there any sort of themes that you like to pursue? No, this is a great question because I'm a little bit all over the place. Uh, you know, I have some people kind of yell at me for branding. I will say the main stuff I write is I do write some stuff for tweens. We're going to talk about one of the books that is aimed toward middle schoolers today. I have a lot of books that are geared towards teens. That's usually where my hub is for writing. And I also have a couple sweet Hallmarky romances for adults. But I would say, honestly, what I like to do in my books, I like to have a lot of humor. I like to have a lot of heart and I like to have a lot of hope, no matter what the specific subgenre is of that. I myself tend to be a very kind personality. And so what I have discovered over the years is a lot of people kind of perceive that as a sort of weakness. So one thing I really like to really promote is the idea that kindness is a strength, not a weakness, just because I tend to be more of a gentle sort of spirit. And you don't often get to see portrayals of that in the media. So a lot of times I'll have characters in different books, not just this one where they will either be gentle or kind. And I'll show that that has its strengths. All right, so let, let's talk about kindness for a second then. Is there enough kindness in the world? And you're writing for a young audience, and uh, we hear a lot about bullying, uh, online bullying. Did some of your own sort of uh, formative years uh, help you to want to focus on this as a theme? I would definitely say so. You know, I was definitely bullied in middle school, and I think I was on the precipice of when social media bullying started to be a thing. So I, I experienced the in-person bullying. But I just remember that being such a big thing. And honestly, middle school and high school years, um, even if you have a kind, gentle spirit, you're often told to kind of quell that to kind of really dampen it because it's often seen as a weakness in middle school and high school circles. So I remember being really frustrated with a lot of the media I read or saw because I never saw anyone like me. Or if there was someone kind of like me in the media, they were usually portrayed as sort of weak or that they needed to kind of get a thick skin sort of thing. So I wanted to be able to create books that had characters where they did embrace kindness, they did embrace gentleness, and it was seen as a good thing and actually helped them to either solve a mystery or save a friend or reach that plot twist at the end. So what I hear you saying is that when you looked out as a young person at the characters that were being peddled to our, our uh, you know, youth in the books you were reading, you didn't see somebody like you. And maybe put a little bit more description on that for me. What was somebody like you? Absolutely. So somebody like me is someone who's very introverted, very shy, would kind of give you the shirt off of your back type of person. And I just wouldn't run into that into fiction. Oftentimes, what was portrayed, especially like if you think about girls in fiction, was portrayed as a strong girl was someone who basically was a lot like a guy. Um, and I really just didn't see anyone who was shy and portrayed as, uh, you know, someone who was equally as strong or someone who was thoughtful. It was usually people who made impulsive decisions. So I, I really uh, yearned for characters who were like me. And I think part of the reason why I jumped into writing in the first place back in high school was that I just didn't see any books like that. So I figured, okay, if you're not seeing on the bookshelves, well, you might as well write it. Yeah. And I guess, I mean, part of that might be part of a movement of just trying to portray women as, you know, stronger and probably, especially in the mainstream media, why you see a lot of that. But I wonder if part of that is also because they view that you could do more exciting storylines with a, a character that's more active or out there doing things. How are you able to make your, your kind, gentle characters also get involved with really compelling storylines? Yeah, no, this is a good question. Actually, I'm going to promote another book in here too as well, if that's okay. So actually a really good example of a book where you have a kind of a shy bookish protagonist who is involved in the action nonstop is a book called Wraithwood by Alyssa Rote. It's Arthurian legend. Um, and honestly, a lot of my characters are not passive in their actions, but they're just a lot more thoughtful. And honestly, I can think that sometimes it would make it for a better story because they will think through things. There are certain characters I'm sure we want to strangle because they just don't think through anything. They just go right for it. So, and honestly, I'm totally fine with the media portrayal of more masculine ladies. I know plenty of ladies who are like that. 
I just hate the equivalent of, you know, being feminine or shy as seeing as weakness too, because I think both are strong at the same time. All right. So let's, let's talk a little about one of your books. You mentioned to me the Cassandra curse, which came out in February of 2022. And you said that really has to do with kindness and gentleness. Uh, Give us a little uh, preview. What is that book about? So the Cassandra curse follows the story of Charity, whose kind actions always end in disaster. So she's going to have to find a way to end her kindness curse, while also finding where her friend who has gone missing went to. So it's a really fun book. It's a book about how this girl, you know, she can't help but be kind. She always wants to be nice, but it always kind of backfires to the point where she can tell there's something underlying, something else that's going on. She's part of a small town. There's something quirky happening that had happened 13 years before. And so she's about to uncover the mystery to find a friend who has gone missing. And the really cool thing about the book is even though, you know, people are constantly telling her like, don't do a kind action. It's going to backfire. That kindness ends up saving the day at the end. So is this a literal curse that somehow there's something about her character that whenever she tries to do something kind, there's some sort of a mystical or magical uh, thing that intervenes? It is. And it's been a curse that's been put on a number of 13-year-olds in the town. They end up forming a Cassandra coalition because they know someone named Cassandra 13 years before had also gone missing. And so they kind of tie it all back to her. Uh, But yes, it is a curse that has been placed on the town that all the kindest tweens are the ones who are seeing repercussions to any kind actions that they do. I mean, is that something that you've experienced or that you see other, other youth experiencing that when they try to act kindly, it blows up in their face for some reason? Do you have some sort of a backstory on that? I do. I actually have a backstory in my own personal experience. So back in middle school, I saw a boy being bullied. And so I decided to step in. I thought it was the kind thing to do to step in, tell people to stop and everything. And so I became an easy target and they decided to take their target away from him and kind of go after me throughout middle school. So I did see kind of, okay, this is how this can backfire is that when you do something nice for someone else, some people may not necessarily like that. And I think part of why we'll see a lot of empathy and kindness go away in teenage years or teenage years is just because people will see one one instance of where kind actions are misconstrued or seen as a weakness or an easy target kind of moment. And then people kind of become jaded, become callous. And we do see this happen throughout the book in the Cassandra curse too. The coalition's made up of a variety of people, but some of them used to be insanely kind. And now they're just very closed off because they're worried what's going to happen if I am kind to someone else again. So those of us who deal with kids, uh, parents or youth leaders, and we, and we have that kind, gentle kid uh, in our midst, you know, how can we help that person be able to keep their kindness without becoming a target of bullying? I think just honestly promoting kindness as a wonderful thing. I think especially a lot of my guy friends, they're kind of told to man up and be like really strong and everything. And kindness was sort of a thing that was overlooked or gentleness was something that was overlooked. So praising those sorts of things, uh, you know, encouraging someone when they put someone else's needs over their own, when they reach out in kindness, I think that can be something. Um, I think schools either having events or maybe even uh, certain days that are dedicated to kind actions or kind, you know, works that you can do. That's something I like to do in a lot of my books is to start discussions about things that, you know, I kind of present a problem like, hey, this is something that is happening right now. And I would love for a reader to kind of walk away and say, okay, what can we do about this right now? How are your characters, especially in your Cassandra Curse book, um, how do they discover, you know, it's, it is possible to be kind and gentle and not have it blow up in your face? Yeah, so trying not to spoil anything because this is obviously a major plot twist. Basically, Charity the whole time is told not to act kindly. And anytime she does, mm-hmm. it does blow up in her face. But at, toward the climax, there is a certain sacrifice that Charity does in order to save a friend, which is considered to be a kind action. And instead of blowing up in her face, she ends up being able to solve a huge problem that has covered the entire town. I don't want to spoil anything, but it may involve zombies. Uh, but <laughs> that, that is uh, essentially, she kind of discovers, okay, this wasn't a weakness all along. This actually was a strength. And there's a reason why this curse was targeting this. So how do, how do we translate that? If you've got a teen reader reading a book like The Cassandra Curse, and they're trying to preserve the kindness and uh, gentleness inside them, what do they take away from your character? How can they do that in a way that you know, shows it is a, strong, a, a strength? I think what's going to take 
honestly, is for multiple people to get on board with this. I think the number one thing that Charity kind of endures is that she's kind of alone in a lot of this. You know, she wants to be kind, but everyone else is telling her not to be. So what this kind of looks like is people also standing up for kindness, you know, for it to trend on TikTok, you know, instead of whatever is trending on TikTok. I think that would be, you know, for people to encourage friends when they are acting selflessly to one another. But yeah, I don't think it's a solution that could happen overnight. I think it would have to be something that multiple people would get on board with because it's certainly difficult to be that one person who does it. Um, And yeah, that is the thing too, is also, I'm sure a lot of people are not kind of bringing some of this stuff to parents. They may just not want to burden them with it. They may think, okay, this isn't that big of a deal. I think back in middle school, I just figured, okay, this is just how people at my age act. And, you know, you just kind of, it's one of those realities of life. That could definitely be something a parent may have to sit down with their kids and talk about, you know, are you running into any issues at school? Is anyone kind of treating you not how you should be? Because I think if my parents had sat me down and talked with me about that, I probably would have been a little bit more honest. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. We know bullying is a problem, you know, so what could we do better, you know, kind of, especially in in hindsight, as you're looking back, what could parents or teachers do better to try to get that kind of honesty from a middle schooler? Because I would imagine, you know, middle schoolers might be like, I just don't want to bother you with this, or you're going to make it worse if I tell you. Yeah, no, I mean, honestly, I think just having a lot of honest discussions can lead to that. I think regularly facilitating conversations. So that looks like around the dinner table, if that looks like, you know, mother-daughter time, father-son time, whatever that looks like, just knowing that there are safe places to have conversations. I think that is uh, one of the most important things someone can do is let someone know I am here to listen. And this is a place where you can share whatever you need to. Uh, You know, obviously you're approaching these things, I think from a faith-based point of view, when you're writing these stories, How does, you know, faith factor into a story like the Cassandra curse? Yeah, I mean, honestly, if we look at the example of Jesus, he was incredibly kind, compassionate. I mean, if you put Jesus up against whatever are, you know, depictions of manhood or manliness now, you know, I, you know, I don't know if we, if we were to introduce someone like Jesus into our society now, I don't know quite how media would be able to handle him because he was obviously very strict with the religious leaders. He obviously did have his moments of indignation, but a lot of times, you know, he was kind to the least of these. And so I kind of like to exemplify that in my characters, um, showing what that kind of Christ-like attitude looks like. Um, And obviously, like, you know, Christianity kind of will butt heads a lot with culture. So I think a lot of times, you know, gentleness and kindness are looked down upon just because it's not a natural thing for a lot of us. I don't think, I think a lot of us would rather kind of resort to like pettiness or revenge. So it's not necessarily natural for us to kind of sit back on knowing that God will handle certain situations and that it's just far better to be compassionate and kind when we need to be obviously standing up for ourselves when we need to. I don't want to say we shouldn't do that, but also prioritizing empathy and understanding that someone is going through something that we may not necessarily understand. And do your characters, I mean, do they interact more explicitly with religion uh, or is, are, are these themes just sort of under the surface or more symbolic in your stories? So, I mean, it depends on the book because I have certain books that are very explicitly in the Christian market and I have some books that are in the general market. I would say Cassandra Curse is actually a book that hits both markets. The publisher it's with Chicken Scratch Books intentionally does that. They do middle grade books to hit both markets. So, you know, Charity goes to a vacation Bible school and kind of her turning point uh, after her parents have a very messy divorce and her dad moves away um, is that during one of the skits that she watches on stage, they talk about kindness, they talk about compassion and forgiving those um, who have hurt you. And she kind of wrestles with that a little bit. So throughout the book, there are light hints of faith in this specific one. Um, just depending on if my book is specifically geared towards the Christian market or for the general market, that faith element is going to be a little bit more vague in the general market versus the Christian. But I always try to have some sort of something that's going to point to the gospel um, in whatever I write. I really do try to have um, something that makes the writing feel a little bit different than what you're going to kind of encounter if you're just going to pick up a book by someone who is not necessarily a believer. Um, All right. You know, one other thing that's just been rolling around in the back of my mind as I've been uh, doing this interview with you is you seem to be somebody who, as a young person, experienced a lot of unusually amazing success at what you were doing, even as a literary agent, even before you graduated. Um, How old were you when you published your, you know, you got your first book contract? 
Yeah, so I got my first contract when I was 21. So I was still in college. I was about a junior in college. And obviously it sounds awesome. Like, uh, you know, when you kind of read through the bio, it sounds like, okay, Hope has racked up a lot of bylines. She's done a lot of things. Well, I don't really show when there is the number of rejections in there. So it took me from when I started at writing at 16 to when I was 21 to finally get that first book contract. And I know that sounds like a short amount of time, but that was me kind of hitting the ground, trying to sprint, trying to do everything I can. So actually at a recent conference I was teaching at, I encourage people to ask authors what their story is because it's never an easy story. Uh, yeah, so obviously the Lord has opened a lot of wonderful doors, but what I'm not including in that bio is there were tons of doors that were slammed in my face along the way as well. So advice to aspiring authors who are having to face some of that rejection early on, I mean, uh, any, any words of wisdom to them? There are so many I wish I could include, so you're going to probably have to stop me. But I would say the biggest thing is do not give up on your project. I think there are a lot of good authors out there who give up too soon. And I was almost one of those authors. I can point to many points in my writing journey when I was about to give up right before the Lord opened the door. So know that your writing can inspire a lot of people can really, you know, I think part of the reason why we love reading so much is it does increase empathy. It does increase kindness. So don't give up, you know, constantly be investing in your craft and, you know, really incorporate prayer into the, into the process because the Lord is going to be with Christian authors every step of the way, no matter uh, if doors are opening or if they're not quite opened yet. That is great advice. Um, all right. So for folks who might be interested in getting a hold of your books or learning more about you in general, where would you direct them? Yeah. So the best place I can send you is to my website. That's hopebollinger.com. Bollinger is B-O-L-I-N-G-E-R. You can find bios, you can find links to books, and then just all the social media should be there as well. And are you very active on social media? I am. Um, I will say certain social medias over others, but I do try to be relatively active on there. But of course, there's always room for improvement for sure. Wonderful. Now, uh, I know we're going we're gonna to hold you over here for a minute because uh, Hope has also agreed to do my book review in the entertainment segment. Uh, but before I get there, just uh, to say again, thank you, uh, Hope, for coming on the show today and, and bringing some of your uh, unique insights on kindness and gentleness. I do think it's something we don't see a lot of in our characters. So it's great to see somebody who's who's writing that regularly. Yeah, thank you for having me on here. In our entertainment segment today, I have held over our interviewee, Hope Bollinger, the managing and acquisitions editor of Endgame Press and a prolific author in her own right, to talk about one of her favorite youth novels that are out there. It's called Legend of the Storm Sneezer. So Hope, uh, tell me a little bit, uh, what, what is this book and who is the author? Yeah, absolutely. So Legend of the Storm Sneezer follows the story of 13-year-old Rose Schuyler, who sneezes a magical storm cloud at birth, and it follows her around everywhere. But unfortunately, it has caused some issues in the public, so she is sent to an asylum for unstable magic. And it is such a fun book. It's a book about friendship between herself and a guy named Merrick. Um, it's about kindness. It's about sacrifice. And I highly recommend it. Any uh, tween who has read it that I have encountered has absolutely loved this thing. Christiana Seferlia actually was one of my clients back when I did agenting. And the minute I saw the book, I knew I just had to have it. And so I'm so glad that we were able to find a home for it. So what is it that you love so much about uh, how she writes this book? You know, I love a couple of things. I really love the main character. She's so quirky. She's so out there. She has such a distinctive sense of humor that I think young readers are really going to latch on to. The author herself is a trooper and you can just really see it in the main character. So I would say the main character, but also it's just such a fun world. She throws a little bit of everything in there. And so they're certainly going to be entertained if they read this. So this does not take this book does not take place in our our usual uh, world of the United States. It's a fantasy novel. It is a fantasy novel, so it takes place in a completely different world. She did all the world building herself. And what age range would you say this uh, is most targeted for? 
I would say especially eight to 13 years old. And the, the protagonist is a, a girl. Is there, are, are there any very major uh, boy characters in there? Yeah, I would say Merrick, her friend, is the major boy character in that. Uh, they are best friends. Uh, they are introduced right off the bat. And he's great, too. You know, he's kind of a gentle giant sort of character. He's obsessed with maple syrup, all things maple syrup and everything. And he just he has his own kind of snarky sense of humor, too, that I really enjoy. As far as, let's say, if you're a parent uh, getting this book for your 10-year-old kid, uh, are, is there anything in there that parents should be aware of or any themes or anything that would be um, you know, appropriate only for certain ages? I would say if you are wary of any ghosts being in books, that is something to keep an eye out for because in the book there is a subplot that does involve some ghosts. But aside from that, I would say, you know, there's no objectionable content that it really is very clean. And there's a really cool salvation message that is throughout the book. Where does faith factor into this book? Is it very explicit? Is this something, you know, is really meant for a Christian audience or is it a more mainstream book? I would say this book does hit mainstream, but the author is a very strong Christian herself. And there is a very clear salvation message in this book. There is a certain sacrifice a character has to make that is very reminiscent of uh, Christ's work on the cross. And so I would say there, there are lots of lines throughout the book that do point to biblical truths, but the author is aiming to hit both audiences. So if parents are also looking for a resource for maybe friends of a kid who are not necessarily Christians, this could be a great one to point them to. Wonderful. The book is titled Legend of the Storm Sneezer. It's part of a series of books, The Stormwatch Diaries. This is book one, and the author is Christiana Seferlia. Hope, thank you so much for bringing this to our attention and giving us this wonderful review. And again, thank you for coming on the Shepherd's Pie today. It's been just a joy having you on. Thank you for having me. That's all the time we have for the show today. We spoke with Hope Bollinger about the importance of kindness and empathy in our youth, and Hope also told us about one of her favorite books for kids, The Legend of the Storm Sneezer. Again, this is Anthony Barone Kolank, and this has been The Shepherd's Pie. If any of you listening today have a question for me or a topic you'd like to have us cover on the show, please drop me a line on my website at antonycolank.com. That's A-N-T-O-N-Y-K-O-L-E-N-C dot com. Also, if you visit my website, you can learn more about my historical fiction series for kids, The Harwood Mysteries. I'll end, as always, with my wife's favorite scripture quote from Romans 8, 28. We know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. May the Lord bless and keep you this week.